Hello everyone and welcome back to Efficient Gaming. This week we are looking at the Witcher Monster Slayer and their new event, La Mars. Um, I love these new events. Uh, things that are based on real world events give me an opportunity to look into the lore of all of those things, both in the Witcher universe and real life. And we always learn quite a bit from that. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so first we're going to have a look into that lore and the research that I did on that. And then we're going to cover the time task for this week and how we find that monster. All right, so for this portion of the video, I've done a little bit of research into La Masse, both from the Witcher world and from the real world celebrations. Um, I've compiled a bit of the most interesting info that I thought uh, was most interesting anyway, uh, together, and we're just gonna have a quick look at that through now. So the first one comes from the Witcher wiki, and it's an explanation of La Masse. So La Masse or Lunasard, hopefully I'm not absolutely butchering the names of these things in my Australian accent, uh, is the harvest holiday also called the Fest of the Scythe, which is celebrated in the first days of August. In the Elven calendar, La Masse begins the seventh surveyed. Now, I think that that's probably why this event was supposed to be last week, uh, right at the beginning of August, and also that the weapon or... Uh, sword that we are getting as a potential reward for finalizing or finishing all of these quests for Lamas is very scythe looking so very very well tied in with the theme of the event so props for that um, I'm very interested to see what this sword does all right so now we're going to move on to the uh, real world celebrations so the first one's probably the furthest away from the original celebrations, and that is Lofmas Day, or Lofmas. That's just me trying to pronounce it similarly to before, so you can completely ignore that pronunciation, that means nothing. Uh, Lofmas Day is observed by Christians, Catholics, Luth Luth Lutherans, and Anglicans. Some of these things I'm just hearing about for the first time. Uh, celebrates mass, church processions, and first fruits. So the first fruit sort of ties in with the harvest festival sort of thing um, in the beginning of August. Uh, so observances. So bringing a loaf of bread made from the new wheat crop, so again tying into the harvest festival, to the church for a blessing. Uh, making loaves from the grain collected at harvest. So these are the ways in which the La Mass is, or Loaf Mass Day, is celebrated nowadays. Now again, I've never heard of anyone doing this, so how popular it is is, I don't know. I would very much love to hear in the comments below if any of you have ever heard of any of these sorts of things before. Um, and this image here is a, I think it looks really cool. Someone's done a loaf owl with salt eyes. That looks like it, it's really, I think it's really cool. Um, date is the 1st of August in the Northern Hemisphere and the 1st of February in the Southern Hemisphere because, of course, the Southern Hemisphere experiences winter and summer at different times to us. Therefore, they experience uh, the equinoxes and change of seasons at different times. So, La Mass Day, um, or Loaf Mass, is a Christian holiday celebrated in some English-speaking countries in the Northern Hemisphere. Maybe that's why I haven't heard of it, because it's some English-speaking countries, um, on the 1st of August. The name originates from the word loaf in reference to bread and mass in reference to the primary Christian liturgy celebrating Holy Communion. It is a festival in the liturgical calendar to mark the blessing of the first fruits of harvest, with a loaf of bread being brought to the church for this purpose. Now, I don't want to criticize any religions here, but, and I can understand why they've done it, as Christianity was becoming more of a popular uh, and trying to get people to convert to their religion, they took a lot, and I'm noticing it even more doing the research into all of these uh, Witcher events, because they're heavily based on pagan events, and
and the Christian current uh, celebrations are what you would call sort of a, uh, a slightly modified version of the pagan rituals that makes it a lot more relevant to Christian things. So La Masse has turned into Loaf Mass Day for the Christians. Um, yeah, it, it, as far as that's concerned, it's a really smart way to bring people over to their religion because they're sort of likening it to what people were already used to. Um, on Loaf Mass Day, it is customary to bring to a Christian church a loaf made from the new crop, which began to be harvested at La Mastide, which falls at the halfway point between the summer solstice and autumn-September equinox. Christians also have church processions to bakeries where those working therein are blessed by the Christian clergy. While Loaf Mass Day is traditionally a Christian holy day, Lunasad is celebrated by neo-pagans and Wiccans around the same time. So these are some of the more modern uh, Lunasad customs. So the name Lunasad which is slightly different from Lamas, but they're likened to the same sort of celebrations and festivals. Uh, in Old Irish, the name was Lunasad, uh, just spelt slightly differently. This is a combination of Lug, the god Lu, and Nasad, an assembly, uh, which is unstressed. We use the suffix, I don't know why, that's just language. In modern Irish, the spelling is Lunasa which is also the name for the month of August, or Lunasar. Not sure how to pronounce that perfectly. Uh, this is more into the celebrations. The Puck Fair, uh, from around the 1900s, um, the image below is showing the wild goat, which is up here, which is the King Puck atop his throne. So they've built a tower for the uh, goat. So this is again tying in with sort of the Harvest Festival. The Puck Fair is held each year in early August in the town of Kilor Kilorglin. It has been traced as far back as the 16th century, but is believed to be a survival of the Lunasad festival. At the beginning of the three-day festival, a wild goat is brought into the town and crowned king, while a local girl is crowned queen. Now, I don't think this is possible now, because... Where would you even find a wild goat? Like, I can't think of where to go. At least not in my country. The festival includes traditional music and dancing, a parade, arts and crafts workshops, a horse and cattle fair, and a market. It draws a great number of tourists every year. So I don't know whether this is still going. It kind of implies that it is. But, yeah, if this exists somewhere near you, uh, I would love to hear from you. I don't know if our community reaches that far, but... Yeah. <laughs> Neo-paganism. So this is a new word that I learned today. I didn't even know this was a thing. Although maybe I will came across it last time and just forgot. But So Lunasad, uh, to the pagans, or similar festivals based on it, is observed by some modern pagans in general and Celtic neo-pagans in particular. Despite their common name, such Lunasad ce celebrations can differ widely. While some attempt to emulate the historic festival as much as possible, others base their celebrations on many sources, the Gaelic festival being only one of them. Neo-pagans usually celebrate Lunasad on the 1st of August in the Northern Hemisphere and the 1st of February in the summer he Southern Hemisphere, often beginning their festivities at sunset the evening before. Now this one I think is what probably ties it closest to the current uh, Witcher version of this holiday, Wicca. Wiccans use the set name Lunasad or Lamas, so literally the same word now, for the first of their autumn harvest festivals. So again, everything draws back to harvest festivals, first fruits, so this is definitely the origin of it. It is one of the early yearly sabbats of their wheel of the year. So again, sabbats and savad, similar sort of word, um, so they're likening the Wiccans to the Elves in the Witcher series, which elves are magical, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, following Midsummer and preceding Maybon. I have no idea what Maybon is. Maybe we'll get to explore that on another Witcher holiday. It is seen as one of the two most auspicious times for hand fasting, the other being at 
Beltane, uh, which is uh, another Witcher holiday, or Bellatine, as it is referred to in the Witcher universe. Some Wiccans mark the holiday by baking a figure of the corn god. So again, it's a similar tie into that Christian um, celebration and traditions. Uh, corn god in bread, and then symbolic, symbolically sacrificing and eating it. So this is one of my favorite parts of <laughs> the game, getting to do these uh, research into these... Um, Witcher events, which are based on real world events. And it's just really cool hearing about some of these traditions. Uh, I don't know if you guys think so as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts below. All right, so let's now check out the time tasks for this week. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that quick lesson we had on the Mars and its origins. Uh, so let's look at the game this time and we'll be looking at the time tasks for this week. Um, but always, as always, we're going to read the news. It's probably stuff that we've already uh, heard. So, Lamas celebration. It's time to celebrate Lamas. To honor this holiday, we've prepared four special contracts with amazing rewards. Collect all of them to earn a significant advantage in upcoming battles. So, hopefully, that means the sword's really good. <laughs> But don't worry, if you miss the reward for the third quest, you'll be able to buy the special Lamas sword in our in-game shop during the fourth part of the event. Now hopefully that doesn't mean that the third part is really hard, because, yeah, it's kind of implying that already. With each contract, you'll get the chance to fight an unusual foe that won't ever appear again. And by that I mean, I, d I don't think they mean it won't ever appear again because you know they might decide to add it to the game next year in the festival or if they're planning on having the same festival next year or maybe they'll do something different maybe they do really mean it will never appear in the game again unique lamas bundles that can be found in the in-game shop will surely help you finish all tasks in time during the event you will be able to earn three new packs as rewards for defeating monsters surprise your friends with consumables like a honeycomb pears and grape juice now, I thought these things were uh, as part of the general gifts that you get, but it looks like you can only get the gifts from defeating these, which is our first contract. And the one, uh, the, the monster that we're defeating this week, even though it said Whale Wraith in their video, is Bloody Fields. Um, the Lamas celebration begins. It's time to start the festivities. Remember about event packs for your friends and special bundles. During the first of our four contracts, your enemies are bloody fields. Unique monsters that can be seen only once a year. Finish them all to collect the prize. So let's have a look at the ones for this week. I have actually already finished these. Um, not to say that it was easy because I'm sure a lot of you are going, how do I find this monster? We'll get to that. So... The tasks for this week were reasonable, um, and I'm glad because they only gave us two days to do it. So, kill five bloody fields, kill ten monsters from the spectre class while using spectre oil, kill three bloody fields without performing any melee attacks, and kill three bloody fields while performing at least three perfect parries and three perfect critical hits. So technically, you have to find six of these if you want to complete all of this and be able to kill four other monsters with Spectre Royal or possibly more than four if it decides to count it for you on some of the other ones, which it didn't for me, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so that's the quests. Let's check out the monster. So it is a rare monster from the Spectre class. And even though it does not say here, it's got a pretty cool red effect when it's starting, unlike some of the other ones it's green, but that's because it's bloody fields. And once Bloade Lamas comes, the red sun shall rise, fields shall awash with blood, farmers shall drop like flies, and no one shall live, and there shall be no witness. And that's from Roe, Roe, Roe Dien's Prophecy. I am terrible at reading names if I haven't had a bunch of practice before. Right, so it doesn't really tell you anything here in the occurrences. It's a special monster, only appears during Lamas. Now, it only appears during Lamas, around noon so it's like a noon wraith it's like a whale wraith maybe that's why they put the whale wraith in the video so that was sort of a hint about when it would spawn or maybe they just made a mistake um 
yeah. So, if you don't know, then it's really hard to find. So, noon is it's really dependent on your um, country and time zone and all sorts of things like that. So, in general, the idea of noon is about from 11 till 1. Or that's when these monsters can spawn in game. But yours might differ. Mine, for example, I didn't start seeing any until 12 o'clock. So, mine should have gone from 12 till 2. Um, I did all of this hunting from about 12 till quarter to 1. Um, so 30, 45 minutes out doing this, just running about trying to get these, um, which we'll go over in a minute. But yeah, so if you're wondering, it's only around lunchtime and you'll work out uh, if you've had any experience catching uh, noon wraiths before, when they spawn for you in your time is when these are going to spawn for you as well. Um, they were not super common. But they were um, common enough that if you wanted to do some running around in some reasonable spawning areas, that they would be there. Okay, let's go back to the tasks. And we are going to have a quick look at a video, which I have pre-recorded from today, which will show us what I think we should do to get these completed. All right, so we've found our first one using Falcon Potions. Um, so this is me just double checking on the time that we've got left on those so that I know how quickly I need to do each one of these bits. So I believe the first thing we are going to attempt is to do this without any melee attacks. Now I did have two goes at this prior to this recording. They were also recorded, but I thought this one was probably the best one to include because it was the most efficient one. So. We are using a big combination of potions here. We are using both a Swift and a Swallow for being able to survive without dealing any melee damage. As you can see, I have just put on a Wolverine potion because that's going to up our damage once we get to halfway. Um, I have a Petri's filter on to increase our sign damage. I am using the armor that gives you extra sign damage that we earned from the last event. Uh, something about having no name and no name armor or something like that. And I've also got a sword that increases damage to signs. So that's what I'm using. As you can see, we managed to do that with a couple of signs and one bomb. Now, I specifically use the moon dust bomb because that is the bomb that we get given eight of this week. Um... Yeah, if you try to use normal bombs, the thing kills you quite quickly. There's just not much else that sort of um, equates to the damage that you're pretty much going to need to use a bomb. You're pretty much going to need to use one of those bombs. Uh, it is one of the best bombs to use because it's got its silver damage and its kinetic damage. Um, I probably wouldn't use anything else. For that phone call, we are going to stop this and go back in. <laughs> but as I was saying, um, yeah, that was how we were defeating the last one. So this one, I uh, we're going to be doing, or halfway through doing the perfect crits and perfect parries. So I've again not done a great job. Don't be afraid to stop if you don't think you're going to complete it. Because finding these monsters is certainly very time limited and it's more important that you finish the battle than it is important that you kill the monster. As long as the monster's still there and it doesn't despawn on you. So again, just battle it. Try and get perfect parries and perfect crits. Um, the equipment that I was using for this one was... Uh, I changed back to a Wolven Sword Realistically, I probably should have changed back to my Manticore armor as well. If you want to make it a bit easier on you to get those crits, you could put on a Blizzard potion, but I literally just used what I already had on. Um, I don't know what else to say about that one. Um, which was basically uh, Spectre Oil so that we could complete the um, killing 10 monsters from the Spectre class with the Spectre Oil on. That's me just checking my uh, 
Falcon Potion to see that there's a couple more, so I'm off to finish that part of the event now. Um, yeah, so tips for no... Uh, tips for perfect parries and perfect crits. Uh, focus on your perfect crits first, because as long as you've got health left at the end, um, you can just sit there and do some perfect parries before you finish it off. So make sure you get those three perfect crits. If I were to do it again and actually have time to plan everything, I would be using Manticore Armor, Wolven Sword, uh, potentially a Wolven Steel Sword instead of a Wolven Steel Silver Sword because that just reduces the amount of damage that you're going to be doing, which will give you more chance at crits just in case you miss one or two. Um, Remember, you can always leave the monster and start the battle again if you don't get it, so that you can get your perfect crits and perfect parries. And a blizzard potion will also help you to um, get those crits up faster. Uh, and always, as usual, survivability. Definitely put on a swift potion. Consider putting on a swallow potion as Joel, just for that little bit extra survivability. All right, so that was the task for this week. So kill five bloody fields. We gave two examples of that. Kill ten monsters from the Spectre class while using Spectre Oil. You can pop a Spectre Oil on. It did seem to count for some of the ones that I killed without the melee damage, but not all of them. And it definitely counted for the ones that I did with using melee damage, so the perfect parries and perfect crit hits. Then literally just, if there's any other Spectres around, um, just kill them at the same time while the oil is on. Um, if you don't find too many other spectres during the day, you can always wait for nighttime and kill regular common spectres with that. Uh, it's not the most efficient, but it gets the task done. And they were pretty generous this week. They were back up to, if you're level 40, 110 gems for the week. We got 300 gold from this section. Uh, some thunderbolt potions, some blizzard potions. We got those eight uh, bombs. So. For the short space of time, it might be worth considering even buying a couple of the Spectre Spawning Scrolls. Although I did look, and interestingly I didn't see those in the shop, um, at least for armor, gold. So that's sure Cursed, that's Insectoid, and that's Vampires. So there was no Spectre Summoning Scrolls, however they are in the Lamas bundle. Um, as you can see down here, Spectre Summoning Scrolls, they're also in the, not the small Lamas bundle, I don't think, no, they were also in the medium Lamas bundle, not quite as many of them, but it would be worth considering doing that, because the gem payout that you're going to get for completing it, and the sword that we're going to be getting at the end, is hopefully very good. So, that's my take on the event, uh, they are your time tasks for this week, so... Hopefully you all managed to get it done. I know you've probably only got one day now, but it sucks these events and me only being able to do these videos like as I've got them done for you, but hopefully it still helps you out. Uh, let me know in the comments below any thoughts or comments on anything like the uh, research that we've done into Lamas or your thoughts on the time task for this week. Uh, I will be away at a wedding beyond today, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get videos out for the rest of Lamas, or if they're going to be in a slightly different format to normal, but I will if I can. Uh, yeah, so hope you all guys have a great, hope you guys all have a great week, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.